the Boston Celtics have shown complete domination this season. They just won their fourth regular season game last night versus the Indiana Pacers, 155 to 104, winning by 51 points and getting their second highest points win total ever in franchise history. They also had great improvements from Jason Tatum in his shot selection, and we're going to break down that and all more on this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez, but before we get into any Celtics news, I would like to let you guys know that around 85% of our viewers are not subscribed. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that big old red subscribe button and join the Celtics Digest family. We're so close to getting to our goal of 2,000 subscribers, and we can't thank everyone enough that's already hit that big subscribe button. So if you guys enjoy Celtics content and want to make sure you guys stay up to date on everything Boston Celtics, hit that subscribe button as we'll be providing that all throughout the regular season. But let's get into the news at hand. Make sure to grab that snack and get ready as this is going to be a jam-packed episode breaking down everything Boston Celtics. First, we're going to be talking about how the Celtics scorched the Indiana Pacers last night. And a little recap right here. The Celtics obviously won 155 to 104. I was luckily at the game and got to witness this. It was utter domination. The Celtics starters combined for 92 points in three quarters. Sam Hauser was on fire in the fourth quarter, as we can see from this post from Jay King. This tweet, the Celtics beat the Pacers 155 to 104 while scoring the second most points in a regular season game in franchise history. Everyone on the Celtics played great tonight, and the Celtics are the first team in the Eastern Conference to be 4 and 0, and they are the top seed in the Eastern Conference as of right now, which is amazing to see as the Bucks, who were a team that was rumored to be at the top with us, have already seemed to have some struggles. The Celtics have clicked as a team with their new additions of Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis. Derek White has been performing phenomenally, and last night, the bench actually had some great rotational pieces come in and actually perform. Peyton Pritchard looked better from three. Sam Hauser looked to get some shots. Svee hit his one shot. Brissett was looking good. Stevens was looking good. The team looked solid last night versus the Indiana Pacers, and they're looking like they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. Next, we're going to be talking about the City Edition jerseys. Yes, that is right. The City Edition jerseys are here, guys, and we're going to be looking at those in the Boston Celtics. We have a picture of Drew Holiday here wearing the City Edition jersey. I broke it down a little bit earlier, but personally, not a lot of fans are that ecstatic about the City Edition jersey this year. I'm not a big fan of all of them. I like this Celtics one. I think it is nice. I like the all white with, I like the font that they have there with the green and the gold, and I like how they have the hardwood on the side right there. Personally, I know not a lot of fans are a big fan of these year City Edition jerseys, but I like the Celtics one. Let me know what you guys think of the City Edition jersey in the comment section down below. We broke down the City Edition court that they'll be debuting as well while wearing these jerseys, and they'll be wearing these, I believe, when they play in the in-season tournament. So that is versus the Brooklyn Nets. November 10th, I believe, is the first game in the, Celt for in the Celtics with the in-season tournament. So make sure that you guys are staying tuned for that as well. But we got some more news breaking down with the Celtics, with the Celtics dominating so far this regular season. We've already talked about how they're already 4-0. They're one of the top teams in the NBA. They are tied with the Dallas Mavericks atop the whole NBA, but they are the number one team in the Eastern Conference. But let's look at some stats breaking down how the Celtics players have been playing and how their starters have been performing. So if you look at this tweet right here, the Celtics net ratings are provided for you guys, and they are a dominating compared to the rest of the rest of the NBA. The starting five right here is a plus 37, while the next highest Denver Nuggets are a plus 2.7, obviously the defending champs. Then the teams behind them, obviously the Warriors, Bucks, and Lakers are all negative, negative three and negative 20. That is wild compared to how the rest of the Celtics are playing. The Celtics starting five has been on fire this season. Derek White has been very effective on both sides of the ball. Jalen Brown, he had a slow start of the season offensively, but has started to pick it up after the first game. Jason Tatum has been locked in all of these games so far. Kristaps Porzingis effectively be being great down low in the post on defense, being able to hit threes when he's needed to, even when to be able to play in the post on offense and even kick out. He's been performing great. Drew Holiday's found his role a little bit better as well as we've gotten into the swing of things. This Celtics starting five is definitely the best starting five in the NBA. We've been hyping it up and it has been pure domination. Al Horford's been solid off the bench too, but I'm glad that they are running with this starting five because it has shown that it is purely dominating. We can look at these stats as well from Stephen 
Steph Noah, he says, in a four-game sample is not a super meaningful one, but these numbers by the Celtics thus far are insane, and this is per cleaning the glass. The Celtics are the number one offense in the NBA with an average of 125.9 points per 100 possessions. They are the number one defense with 102 points per 100, and they have the point differential of a plus 23.9 per 100 of a 78-win team. That is freaking ridiculous. I would love to see the Celtics perform and do great for this season. Obviously, they've had top offenses, top defenses in the past, but having the top offense and defense going at the start of the regular season is great, and we're only going to get better and get the chemistry better. Obviously, the role players are going to start finding their roles more as well. Guys like Pritchard and Hauser have stepped up in the last game versus the Pacers. Hopefully, they can continue to step up as well. Brissett found his role after the second game when he got jolted in versus the Miami Heat. He's earned himself the backup center role in the successful games after that playing against the Washington Wizards and in the end of Pacers last night. So I am excited to see how this Celtics team will continue to develop, gelling together, working as well to, as one. Obviously, Joe Missoula has had this experience of being the head coach already last season. Now he's getting it more comfortable with the team, and his starters are playing as well. Big upgrades on this team as well, and big upgrades on the coaching staff have led to a generational success for the Celtics this season, and hopefully they continue to succeed as well. But I want to talk about the main man that has been leading this team, and that is Jason Tatum. And could Jason Tatum possibly be MVP? Last night, Keith Smith tweeted out Jason Tatum VP, and I thought that was funny, and I want to give him credit to that. But I want to say that I think as well that Jason Tatum could run for this MVP status. I said that I think Jason Tatum could be a top three player running in for MVP. And I think he's definitely deserving in that category. Let's look at these stats looking at Jason Tatum. Sam Cassell is a true miracle worker. This is Sam Cassell appreciation post. This is Jason Tatum's shot chart looking at from 2022 to 2023. Obviously, as you see in 2022, lots of threes and just layups at the rim. But in 2023, he started to expand his jump shot, pulling some more mid ranges and not taking as many threes, which is great to see from the Boston Celtics. We don't want to see as much iso ball from Jason Tatum. And I think that limits his success. He'd be able to be more of a playmaker, be able to take more of diverse shots, will be uh, ultimately unlock his versatility of his game. But let's look at Jason Tatum's stats so far this season, courtesy of basketball reference. Jason Tatum is averaging 29.8 points, 9.3 total rebounds, and 4 assists, shooting 56% from the field, 41% from 3, and 80% from the free throw. That is amazing stats. If Jason Tatum can keep up these stats and even, even perform better on them, almost averaging 30 points on 9 rebounds with 4 assists and shooting great numbers as well, that is awesome for the Boston Celtics. Also having guys like Kristaps Porzingis and Jalen Brown who are still effective superstars alongside Jason Tatum being able to put up 20 points a night is so effective. And Jason Tatum obviously is not going to have dominant nights every single night. But if he can continue to be a great playmaker and great rebounder as he has this season, I think he'll continue to be an MVP candidate. I think he is definitely in the race for MVP. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you guys think that with all the other superstars, Jason Tatum won't be able to win MVP? Or do you guys think that Jason Tatum will surpass all the other superstars alongside the team and still make a clear case for MVP? I think that he has a very, very high chance of being the MVP this season. But that's what we're going to be talking about for this episode of Celtics Digest. We broke down the City Edition jerseys. We broke down Jason Tatum's improved jump shooting and how I think he has a chance of being MVP. We looked at how the Celtics are nasty this season and been dominating with a 4-0 record, coming off a great win versus the Indiana Pacers, beating them by 51 and having great plus-minus ratings for their starting five and also dominating with being the number one offense and number one defense. If you guys enjoyed this Celtics content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're at this point in the video and you have not subscribed, we know you enjoy the content, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. I'm Bruce Velez, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.